Look at this, back to that story about the trapped dolphins in Newfoundland. Time is running out, but it looks like they have cleared the ice. People are waving to them. You can kind of hear that in the background there. This is amazing. The CBC, Zach Gowdy, is actually on the scene there. Let's get some more details from him on this. Zach, are they free now? I've been, we've been watching this on our monitor here. It's quite fascinating. Yes, it's just incredible. They have just made their break for it. People here are ch clapping, cheering, horns are honking, the sirens of the fire department are blaring, and people cannot believe what they have just seen. These seven dolphins that have been trapped by sea ice here in Hearts Delight Islington since Saturday have just made a break for it. It looked grim this morning, but it was all thanks to some local ingenuity that this dramatic rescue just uh, wrapped up with a happy ending here, an unbelievable end of this story. Let's speak to the man who really helped to make it happen. Uh, I'm going to bring in Stanley Legg, if he wouldn't mind. Uh, I know you don't want to take all the credit for this, Stanley, but he is the uh, uh, chief of the local fire department and uh, the man who owns the excavators, these heavy equipment uh, pieces over here that were instrumental in that rescue. Stanley, congratulations yeah, to you. Thank you. Just tell us how that equipment was used to free those dolphins. Uh, well, we had the boys here just uh sweeping the uh, ice and, and uh, pushing it around the, the head of the wharf deer and just trying to break up some of the, the, the ice. So where did the idea to use those excavators in this way come from? Actually, uh, Randy Suley and uh, Faye, uh, Randy's the guy on the, the 160 JCB there. His wife made a comment to him this morning, why don't you go and uh, see if you can get an excavator to uh, help free the ice along with the, the Coast Guard boats and the fisheries boats, I mean. Wow, so a local person's great idea, and then the, the next day, you know, you guys are down here with this equipment. For a few hours this morning, it looked like you were really, you know, working, uh, swimming against the tide, as it were, uh, but in the last number of hours, you really managed to clear this channel, and lo and behold, it was just enough, hey? Yeah, well, I guess Mother Nature helped with the wind change and then uh, work in our favor a little bit there, so but it all, all went ahead well. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I know it was a real community effort, uh, you know, from your own excavator operators, the local fire department, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, the Whale uh, Release and Strandings Group here in Newfoundland and Labrador. But what was it like for you at that moment to see the, all of that work from so many people come together and the dolphins swim to freedom? Uh, I guess it's mission accomplished, and uh, I guess we've done something good today for uh, for the environment, and uh, I guess give a lot of people a lot of, a lot of uh, peace of mind that the dolphins got away freely. Yeah, well, we know who they have to thank for it. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate everything you guys did. Yeah, well, our fire department was here on, uh, we opened up our fire hall last night to uh, Fisheries and Oceans and let them go in and get a warm up some coffee. And our local fire rights uh, made sandwiches and coffee today to make sure everybody was uh, warm and fed. And uh, we had our ice water rescue crew here. Uh, just in case something went wrong, we had our guys here on standby to uh, to jump in if needed. A real community effort. Thank you so much. Dan. Right on, thanks. Take Maybe care. I could ask this lady who's standing by here for a quick second. Yes, come over and tell me about how uh, amazing that was. You and your young fellow, if you don't mind. Uh, you guys were standing right next to me when the dolphins made their break. Just describe that moment. Oh my gosh, I can't. It, 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 it's amazing. I was so worried that they weren't going to make it out. And when they got stuck right here, I thought they were going to, that was it for them. Soon it went, soon the ice broke out, that was it. They were free. Everyone was yeah. jumping for joy. And God, I'm so happy that they're free and they're safe. How did it <laughs> and now they're going to go and get a feed. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did it feel, young man, to see them swim away to freedom there? It, it felt pretty good, to say the least. <laughs> it was his first yeah. time seeing dolphins too, so. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was a bit skeptical that they would uh, get out. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, we all were, of course. Yeah. It looked very different here this yeah. morning, but it just goes to show what a, a lot of people working together can accomplish. Yes, eh? It is. It and the community, every, stuff like this. Every everybody always pulls together. Wow. Everybody's here for everybody, even the mammals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So wonderful. Can you yeah. introduce yourselves really quick? Uh, hi, I'm Sharon Moss, and this is my son Stephen. Yes, yeah, Stephen Kalebellis. Really <laughs> nice to meet you both. You it's great to all. share that moment with you. Thank, Thank you, you. It so was much. So exciting. Yeah. Absolutely. My heart was pounding so fast. It was unreal. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm glad they're safe now. Too good. Wonderful. Well, there you go, Thank folks. You. A, a story that has absolutely gripped people in this part of the province and across the country today ends with a happy ending. All thanks to, again, some local ingenuity and a lot of people who came together, working together uh, to make that moment happen. I hope you guys got to see it all. One of the most thrilling things I've ever got to cover. And um, again, we always appreciate <laughs> when these stories have a happy ending. Zach Gowdy, we were so excited here. We are in the studio watching and it's like, we need to go there now because it looks like they're being freed. And we could hear you actually say, I think they're done. Give us a bit of uh, history as to, you know, how long they had been there. And there was at a point a feeling that, oh, there's a problem here. We may actually have to take them out on stretchers, right? Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, this situation has been ongoing since last Saturday, and you can see this little bit of sea ice that's left. Only a few days ago, that ice was stretching all the way out the harbor, and those dolphins had been driven in by the ice, penned in, uh, and they had nowhere else to go but this small area of open water you can see in front of me. Uh, the hope was that the wind at some point would turn around, push the ice back out to sea, and the dolphins would be freed. Instead, the opposite happened. The wind keeps blowing in the wrong direction, pushing the ice ever closer to shore, and trapping those dolphins in an ever-shrinking pool of, uh, of open water. Here this morning, they barely had an area the size of an average, you know, front or backyard, maybe 10 meters long by 30 meters across. That's a small space for seven full-size dolphins to swim around in. They've been stuck there since Saturday with no food. Uh, they're becoming increasingly agitated. So things here were looking quite desperate this morning. Um, again, it's not easy for people to step in and uh, solve the situation that nature created, but it was a case where standing by and doing nothing just wasn't an option. They were running out of time. So people here were trying uh, two different strategies to free those dolphins. One, as uh, Stanley Legg was just describing, and again, an idea that one of the excavator operators um, partners seemed to have last night, just use your heavy equipment to move some of that ice. Great idea, because apparently it just worked. Uh, they were working for several hours, uh, seemingly, uh, you know, without making much headway. But when it started to happen, it happened quickly. Um, the wind also gave them a bit of an assist and they cleared just enough space for the dolphins to get through. Hey, Zach, you know what? You keep mentioning that moment. I know you can't see it there, but we're going to play it back. See if you can hear it in the background there, because it just happened moments ago, and we want to play it for okay. our viewers. Okay, here we Guys, go. Guys, they're, they're making their break Please for do. it right yeah. now. I can't get in front of the camera. Okay, so you're going to have to do this without me on the camera. I'm standing by with the guest. We'll jump in there. Stanley, I'm going to get you to stand right there if you don't want. Okay, right there. Actually, would you, yeah, back over. You and I will walk in when the time comes. <laughs> you can hear Zach talking a little bit. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I am letting this play because also, Zach, we are watching them leave that ice and people in the newsroom here are cheering Newsday, as well. And that, I roll it back. That was it. They just made the break. They just made the break. That was <laughs> it. I hope you were rolling. Oh, and that was Zach Gowdy, who's down there covering the story. <laughs> That's you saying, oh, my gosh, I hope they're rolling on this. And we were. And you can see it. Yeah, it is. It is the moment of the day. A fantastic moment, and you, you, what I was saying there about when it happened, it really happened fast. Myself and Stanley Legg, the chief of the fire department, the person who owns those excavators, we were standing by to talk to you, and in the commercial break, bang, you could see those first few fins just pop up on the other side of that ice for the first time since Saturday. An absolutely joyous moment and when you heard the cheers, the fire department sirens, and you can tell in that moment what seeing those dolphins swim to freedom meant to people in this community, many of whom have been watching watching this situation play out ever since the dolphins became trapped, some of whom have been going home only for a few hours sleep at a time. And you know, again, it, it 
everything matters. It takes a community to make something like this happen. Someone has to operate the excavators, but someone else has to brew the coffee and make the sandwiches and, you know, help to, to feed and keep these people warm. So, uh, you know, everything that everybody did in the littlest ways that they contributed, well, you, you saw the effect and the, uh, the emotional release uh, that just happened here as those dolphins swam away. And just looking around now, I, I, I don't want to tell you how cold it is around <laughs> here, but that big scene, even the fire department, the DFO crews, they're all heading for the fire department now where it's warm and uh, I'm sure they'll be doing some do celebrating when they get there. Absolutely. Zach Gowdy, thank you for your reporting and your excitement and bringing this live to us right here on CBC News Network. He is in Heart's Delight, Newfoundland, and I think it's to everyone's heart's delight that those dolphins are now free. Zach Gowdy, you're the best. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Pleasure.